It is the merger of the United States, Mexico, and Canada into one super country. It's like NAFTA on steroids. And it's about bringing all three countries together into one country, joining our governments, our currencies, our military. I had the pleasure of interviewing former president of Mexico, Vicente Fox, and he said himself there will be a North American Union. Can you please talk about how you, as president of Mexico, President Bush, and the prime minister of Canada established working groups towards a North American Union? There is the, the original document, the original commitment, and uh, there is supposed to be follow-up uh, procedures, there is supposed to be committed committees uh, to discuss and to advance, but that's not happening. Will there be a North American Union? Do you believe there will there be a North American Union? I would hope so. I think it would be very convenient for both of us. When Vincente Fox, in the 1990s, was a candidate for presidency of Mexico, I was at a conference and I sat next to him at dinner and on the other side of Fox was Robert Mandel, whom I mentioned already as the father of the European Monetary Union. And we impressed him obviously with the idea that there would be great benefits for Mexican economy from this. He had no difficulty accepting it because he was a successful businessman before he became a politician. He was the uh, president of uh, Coca-Cola Mexico. So when he was elected, he went on a courtesy visit to the White House. And the press release at that time said that he raised with President Clinton the idea that we should push forward on a North American monetary union. It was said that he did the same thing when he got to Ottawa and talked to Chrétien. We have had opinion surveys which showed that the idea of a common currency with, North Am with the Americans and Canadians is totally unacceptable to Mexicans for nationalistic reasons. They want to maintain Mexico as a clear, identifiable nation and culture. And for some reason, word has spread amongst them that this is the first step towards absorption by the Americans. So you say you, you've heard about the Amero currency? Mm -hmm. where, did you, where did you hear about it? I read in the newspaper two months ago, yes, yeah. for the Mero, like the Mexican people, it's why it's my, my peso is, I don't want another currency, mm -hmm. I am Mexican, I, I like my peso, yeah. I don't need, I don't need a new currency. tratar de, de estabilizar la economía y si iba a manejar solamente un solo capital, que es los comentarios que dicen para que esto se estabilice, tenga una estabilidad, pero eso lo escuchaba que iba a ser CODE dentro de 5 o 6, hasta creo que dentro de 10 años más, menos que no sé ahorita si anda funcionando eso. And this whole new world order ideation is a bunch of uh, banking and intellectual elites that, uh, that basically see the same sort of mentality. Control the economy, control the issuance of currency, you control the nation. And now control the food, you control the people. Let me control the issuance of currency and credit of the nations, and I don't care who you put in power, because they know, control the money, you control the nation. And society, we're not aware of this. But this is all part of this whole uh, globalization scheme that's happening right now. Even to raise those kinds of issuers, to raise the euro current, the Amero currency issue is to inflame a lot of the people who are most fearful about integration. Uh, so for those reasons, I say, leave them aside. Uh, we, have some, we have some preliminary steps uh, uh, before we get to a point where we can seriously entertain that. The trouble with the monetary union is that there's tremendous symbolic attachment to our currencies. Uh, although, if you step back, you would say, certainly the Greek drachma uh, or the 
French franc or the German Deutschmark uh, or the Spanish peso uh, would be far more delicate uh, and important to those countries uh, because in some of those countries they've used the same currency for thousands of years uh, whereas we haven't even uh, existed for 300 years uh, in North America uh, so if they were ever over ever able to, if they were able to overcome their fear of losing this distinctive cultural item defining their country like Greece for 3,000 years, certainly it shouldn't be that hard for Canadian or Americans uh, or even the Mexicans uh, to contemplate a different currency. I happen to believe that it would be beneficial to our three countries to begin studying this issue seriously because it is not a simple step to go from uh, a national currency to a unified currency. It is very hard. And the European experience shows uh, that countries have got to find a way uh, to consult on macroeconomic policy and budgets and deficits and debts uh, uh, and establish indicators that would reduce the distortion between economies before you even take the first step toward a common currency. I believe the American people, the Canadians, the Mexicans are practical people. Uh, you have to make a convincing case that moving towards a unified currency will be demonstrably better for their standard of living than under the current system right now. We should proceed by letting the academics study this for us. Think about it as much as possible. Help us to understand what the hazards and the benefits are before the people make uh, calculate whether it's in their benefit or not. Well, of course, he'll also give you the line that he never ever talked about a North American union, that he's always advocated a North American community. But if you read what he has to say, what he envisages is this North American community uh, would be organized, he would have basically three very powerful institutions that would basically correspond with a, a judicial and a legislative branch uh, and a, um, an executive type branch, which would, um, the, the executive branch would, would steer the agenda for the three, the three countries, Canada, the US, and Mexico. You would have essentially a North American parliament to mirror the, the three separate independent um, uh, legislative bodies in the, in the three countries. And, uh, and then you would have a, um, a North American uh, court, which would adjudicate on, uh, on disputes, etc. Well, that sounds an awful lot like a North American union to me. Mm -hmm. He can call it a community if he wants it, but now we're just parsing terms, silly semantics. It's important to know when we're in, the, in your talking about this subject that nobody here is talking about a political union. They're talking about a economic and political arrangements which deepen integration and the relationship but in which the countries, as in Europe itself, sit, preserve, maintain their sovereignty. We're talking about the, the virtual destruction of, uh, of a sovereign nation, uh, three, three sovereign nations, the end of a, of, of a constitution. Sovereign nations can be an obstacle to the, the free flow of, uh, of uh, money and goods and labor. And uh, if they can erase national boundaries, obviously that would maximize their efficiencies and their profits. But at what cost? I mean, only the nation state is, is best equipped to, to safeguard our, um, our individual uh, inalienable rights. How's your experience been in the European Union over that? Uh, it's, it's rubbish, a lot of rubbish that you use. The issues that most of people face is um, employment, we have a large then immigration population coming over and so the UK at the moment in the recession are quite worried about having losing their jobs but other than that it gives you opportunities that you wouldn't normally get and travel as well is good. I mean from a business point of view it, it, uh, it makes business more effective, you know, um, you don't have to worry about exchange rates and things like that but it just seems so remote and far away, I mean it's over in Strasbourg in France and yeah. we don't really get to hear much about what goes on there, you know, you, you vote once every four years and then doesn't seem to change much. Everything is more complicated and bureaucratic and uh, you got all these like strange laws that maybe apply in France, for example. 
that in Scotland they're completely irrelevant and it just makes life more difficult. It's a process of harmonization because you have different social systems, different currency, different uh, quality of life and I think it takes, uh, in this case, maybe 40 years if you have a democratic process.